Okay, so while we're opening to page 13, we'll have our look at the calendar. Today is October the 10th. Um, we are going to turn quiz number three into a take-home quiz, so bring it back and put it in the folders first thing on Friday. Today we talk about uh, composition of functions. This is a review of pre-calculus. And we also talk about the chain rule. That is a calculus concept. And it is, uh, in my opinion, the most important derivative rule that we will see all semester is this thing called the chain rule. Um, there are a lot of functions that we're able to find the derivative of. Um, but the chain rule is going to really open the door in terms of allowing us to find derivatives of whole new classes of functions. In fact, the chain rule is so important, it gets two days. So today and Friday, we're talking about this one thing called the chain rule. All right, uh, also on Friday, what's happening? Project three is due. What else is happening? Project four is assigned. It, it's sitting over here on the table. If you are interested, you can go pick one up at the end of class, but I'll hand that out on Friday. Um, any questions on the calendar? Okay, then let's dive into the start of the chain rule here. So again, on page 13, and we'll go up here to the top with number one. So it says we'll begin with the review of composition of functions. And we'll start with these two functions. F is e to the x, and g is 3x plus 1. Can you guys with your neighbors do A, B, C, and D? Any questions on any of those four parts? Composition is okay. Really the most important thing is which one do you work from, the outside first or the inside first? Inside first, that's the most important thing, right? It's, it's really the only way to kind of mess up the order. Just start with the inside, work your way out. All right, so if I give you two functions, it feels like we're able to compose them and make one brand new function, super. We're gonna try going the other direction now. This is the direction that's gonna be important in calculus. We're gonna start with one function that is the composition of two simpler functions. And our goal is to try to break it apart into what I'm calling here the two component functions or the parent functions. So let's try the first one together and then you guys are gonna uh, jump through some more of these. Uh, and just to save some time, I've started crossing some of them off. So, I mean, you don't have to cross them off, but don't do F and G at this moment. Try them later on for more practice if you want to. But let's try part A. Uh, I've written up here in red, we're going to let F be the outer function. So I guess that means G is the inner function. So G of X is going to be something and F of X is going to be something. So I've got a cosine and I've got a squared. Which one is the inner function? It's cosine. So we're going to let G of X be plain old cosine X. And then f of x, this is the rub. Some people have trouble identifying what is that outer function in, in, like in its simplest form. It is basically just taking whatever you had and squaring it, right? So the cosine doesn't appear in that one. It's just plain old x squared. And then instead of x, we had cosine x. Clear on how to break that function into two component functions? Now, there's actually always infinitely many ways to break a function up into different component functions. For example, you could say, all right, uh, g of x is just, I'm doing the same one again. g of x is x, and f of x is cosine of x squared. Does that work? Yes, it does. We have a, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't accomplish anything. You're, ma you're making f do all the work, and g isn't doing anything. Um, it's going to turn out that's not going to be useful for us in calculus. Uh, we could do something like, uh, what can we do? G of x is uh, x plus 3. There's no x plus 3 in there, right? So what am I going to have to put in f of x? I'm going to need a minus 3 to undo the plus 3, the artificial plus 3 that I did. So I guess we could do something like cosine of x minus 3, and then the whole thing gets squared. So if I put x plus 3 into the bottom x, we get the original function. That's true, and it's also useless. So you're going to want to pick the like a natural. I'm hoping it's, it's a natural way to break up the functions, like the first one. So can you guys try b, c, d, e, and h? Always let f be the outer one, just so we can be consistent and use the same letters. Seems like we're pretty good at breaking functions up into the component functions. Um, we did skip over g. g is actually quite a bit more complicated than any of the others. g might require even more than two functions if you were really kind of splitting it up into its simplest parts. 
So we will come maybe to examples like G on Friday. Well, let's go to number two. Okay, um, so it says, uh, now that we have derivative rules for several parent functions, like we know how to do x to the fifth, and we know how to do e to the x and 2 to the x, we have some derivative rules we can handle. Now we're going to take derivatives of a composition of functions. And uh, the basic rule that tells us how to do it is the chain rule. And it's here in a couple of versions. First, in uh, f and g notation, it says the derivative of f of g of x. What kind of a thing is that called when you have f of g of x? That's a composition or a composite function. So that is, that's why we've been talking about composite functions, is we're now taking the derivative of something that looks like f of g of x, outer, inner. So here's what you do. You take f prime, but instead of doing f prime of plain old x, we do f prime of g of x. Whatever the inner function is, it stays there. So you do the derivative of the outer function, but not just at x, at g of x. And then the chain rule comes in here and says, then you multiply by the derivative of the inner function, g prime of x. And so here's a kind of less formal way to write that. The derivative of f of some stuff, normally the stuff is just x, but if it's something more complicated, here's the chain rule. It says you take f prime of the stuff, that stuff gets copied, just like the g of x got copied in there, and then you multiply by the derivative of the stuff, g prime of x and the other symbols. And then there's the Leibniz version, which we'll take a look at uh, after we do one of the version ones. Um, but basically, the English version is down here. To take the derivative of a composition, you take the derivative of the outside function, evaluate it at the inside function, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, sadly, at this point, we don't have a good way to prove that this is true, so we're going to take it on faith. Um, there is a way to prove it um, using something called linearization, which we'll talk about after the next test. But uh, just trust me on this one for, for the moment, at least. Okay, so we're going to find the derivatives of the following. We're going to skip part A and jump right over here to part B. So first of all, 3x plus 4 squared. Was that one of our set up here somewhere? Yeah, that's part C. So we're taking the derivative of this function, 3x plus 4 squared, but we've already broken it up into its components. So uh, let's see if we can follow our rules. So this is from part C above. We're going to start writing down some things. So here's what it says. It says f prime. Okay, so that's where we start, f prime. So look up at the top. What is f prime from part C? It's 2x. So f prime of x is 2x. And let's go ahead and find g prime while we're at it as well. So what is g prime for that? It's just 3. Is everybody okay? Those are just the two derivatives, derivatives of the component functions, the little pieces. And then basically we put them together, and the chain rule essentially just says we're supposed to multiply these things. It's, a, it's the times right there. You multiply f prime times g prime. But the one little twist is that inside of f prime is something complicated. It's g, whatever that is. So we got to come down here and fix this f prime part. We didn't really want f prime of x. We wanted f prime of g of x, which means f prime of, what was the g function from up there? 3x plus 4. Everybody see what we're doing? f prime of g. That's what the chain rule says. So I just stuck 3x plus 4 into the f function, or to the f prime function. And now we'll write the answer. So take a look at the f prime function. It's the function that doubles whatever you give it, right? It's the doubling function. So what do we double in this case? Yeah, it's doubling 3x plus 4. That part is tricky for a lot of folks. All we're doing is a composition of functions. You are doing f prime of g of x. That's something you guys did quite easily up in number 2 up there. f prime of g of x. Okay, what was g of x? It was 3x plus 4. And that 3x plus 4 gets stuck inside the f prime function. So we just stick it in there for the x. So instead of 2x, it's 2, 3x plus 4. Okay, and then we put it together to get the answer. So here's our final answer, y prime equals, we just multiply the purple thing times the bottom blue thing. 
So 2 times 3x plus 4. That's the first part in purple. And then the chain rule says multiply by g prime, 3. And that's our answer. We'll move it up a little bit. It's actually the same as the two functions together and then multiplying them out. When you say multiplying out, do you mean uh, like foiling this thing, 9x squared plus? Yeah, um, so it will give us the same thing. In this case, we do have an alternative to all this. We could multiply this out, 24x plus 16. Uh, and if we take the derivative, what do we get for the first part? 18x. If you multiply out this y prime, what do you get for the x? 18x. What's the derivative of the 24x? 24. 24, what do we get? 2 times 4 times 3? It's 24. So they do agree. Does that mean we could avoid the chain rule every time? The answer is no. First, if instead of squaring up here, it was to the 200th power, it would take you a long time to do all that. But also, if it was... Um, uh, you know, something like the e to the x rule where we can't foil. There's no foiling out. Um, yeah, so it gives us the same answer if we have an alternative. A lot of times we don't. Todd? So just in terms of saving time, I'm probably just going to leave our first answers because um, I want to make sure we have a chance to practice this. But you should at home, uh, when you have a chance, simplify as much as you can. So if that means distribute there, that's fine. It's also fine to leave it like that. Okay, here is an alternative to the chain rule, or to that version of the chain rule. Let's take a look at part C. Does C appear up above somewhere? All right, so C is over there in part H, right? So we could mimic what we just did with the F and the G and all that stuff. I'm going to show you an alternative, and then you guys are going to pick individually which one you prefer. So take a look at the top here, version 2, due to Leibniz. He says dy dx, that was our symbol for the derivative, that was his symbol, is dy dz times dz dx. So first there's this funny z popping up out of nowhere, but if we think of these as fractions multiplying, does it at least seem reasonable that when you multiply them you'd get dy dx, if you could cancel the dz's. No, you can't cancel them because they're not, um, uh, they're, they're symbols, they don't mean, you know, it's not like a number that we can just cross off, but at least it seems reasonable. So here's what we do. If we take uh, this one right here, and we break this up, and we're going to let z equal the inner function. So what is z in this case? It's x plus 1. Uh, just calling it z instead of g of x. That's just what you did up above. And instead of um, f, we're just going to call it y. It's x to the 23rd, right? But I'm not going to use x. Do you know what letter I'm going to use? I'm going to use z. Do you guys believe that it's, I mean, this is, it, it's just z to the 23rd. It's what it is, right? I'm not really, it's just, it's kind of like pulling it apart and then substituting it. And just, it's z to the 23rd instead of x to the 23rd. And there is a little hint up here. Uh, it says you let y be a function of z. That's what we just did. And z a function of x. And if you do that, then you get to apply this kind of fraction-looking rule. So let's see if we can use that. So I'll just write it down here so we have it. So it said dy dx is dy dz times dz dx. So let's start finding the different pieces. dy dz, the derivative of y, where z is the independent variable. What's the derivative of y? 23 z to the 22. Easy, right? Just our power rule. Times, that's the same times in the other version of the chain rule. You always multiply by dz dx. So in this case, what rule are we going to? This says find the derivative of z. So you go to the z equals equation. And you find that derivative with respect to x. So if you know this notation, it really tells you exactly where you're supposed to go. So find the derivative of the z equation with respect to x. What's the derivative of z? 2x minus 1. What am I missing? I need parentheses. 2x minus 1 is one thing. 
it wouldn't hurt to just always put parentheses around the two pieces. Then you'll never go wrong. So there's, there's no denominator per se. The DZ, DZ, DX, I know it looks like a fraction, but it isn't, uh, it's not a fraction per se. It's just notation that says find the derivative of the Z equation with respect to the variable X. Z is always going to be the inner for the for the this version that we've written here in red. Yeah. Am I crazy about association? No. Well, I just don't like the fact that like, we already have like so many associations with fractions. I'm just using an entirely new symbol that doesn't have this association. Yeah, I buy that, but I think there was a good reason he used something that looked like a fraction, and that was that uh, our slopes of tangent lines came from slopes of secant lines, right. and slopes are a little change in y and a little change in x. Right. So, so I think that's why he did it. Um, but yeah, I. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, and so this one is almost done, but there's something to be desired about giving me an answer with z in it when my problem had only x. So instead of z, x squared minus x plus one. So that's 23, and then instead of z, x squared minus x plus one. And that part there was like finding f prime, but putting g inside of it. It's the same same kind of thing that we did up here in purple. And then that's raised to the 22, and then times 2x minus 1. That's good. For right now, that's good. Yeah, it's probably going to be good all the time, actually. Yeah, you'd have exactly the same answer. So you guys pick. Uh, I'm just getting a rough sense right now. Uh, if you had to prefer one or the other, there's the F and G version or the Z version. Can you guys pick? If you prefer the FG version, raise your hand. You have to vote for one, so raise your hand now or raise your hand in a moment. All right, if you prefer the Z version, all right, it looks like Z takes it by a little bit. That's fine, but just use whichever one you prefer. All right, let us... Continue on. Uh, let's um, let's try part D right now. Was D one of the ones that was uh, on the previous page? E to the x squared plus five x. Is that up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you prefer the F and G version, then half the work is already done. We've already got F and G parsed out. We'll write down the Z version. Uh, so what do we have here? We need to have z be something with x, that's the inner, and then y be something with z, that's the outer. So what's the inner in this case? x squared plus 5x. That's what you wrote down for the g of x function on the previous page. And then what did we write for the outer function on the previous page? e to the x, but now it's e to the z. If this version has z's in the outer function. Okay, here we go. I'll just keep writing this formula. dy dx is dy dz times dz dx. Okay, we just need to know where to go. So for the first part, the y dz, which equation are we using, top or bottom? It's the bottom. The y dz says find the y equation and take a derivative where z is the variable. What's the derivative of the bottom equation? e to the z. Right? It's our simplest derivative rule. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So e to the z is e to the z times. That's the chain rule. Z dx, it says find your z equals and take a derivative. So what's the derivative of the z equals? 2x plus 5. Again, what mistake did I make? Parentheses. And it's not a bad idea to just put them every time around both parts. And then we're just about done. But we don't like z in our final answer. So instead of z, x squared plus 5x. Just bring it back. E to the x squared plus 5x.
<clears throat> Questions on that one? <clears throat> okay. So I got to say, I've been doing chain rule for many, many years, and I would always prefer the F and G version, but I think you guys have won me over. I'm kind of liking this five minutes thing now. Okay. It's not too late to teach an old dog new tricks. All right. Uh, skipping merrily along, let's jump down and try one of these, and then you guys will try the group thing at the bottom. All right. How about we try, um, let's try this part B. Now, part B has something that's new and possibly frightening to us. What is it? Natural log, ln. Again, we'll, we'll spend a day reviewing log functions. But for right now, we'll just treat it as some symbol that we may or may not be comfortable with. But what we can do is the same kind of thing we've been doing. We can let z equal the inner function and y equal the outer function. So what is the inner function? x cubed. And then the outer function, but it has no x, only z. So what's the outer function? ln of z. For what it's worth, uh, if you are not really sure how um, legible your handwriting is, put a line through that z every time like I do. Really easy to confuse z's with twos. Okay, so let's give this a shot. So we'll write down our, our formula again, dy dx equals, see if you can write it down without looking at it up at the top. What's the formula for dy dx? So I'll tell you, when I was trying to first memorize this, and it was just symbols, I didn't understand what I was doing, I had this little mnemonic device. I said, OK, the first part goes right up there, and the bottom part goes way at the end. So it's like the they couldn't be more separate. You really split them up. And then whatever the other letter is goes in the blanks. So put a Z in each of those spaces. So however you can remember that those symbols, that formula, if you've got it, then I think the calculus is actually pretty easy. Okay, dy dz, what is the derivative of the y equation? Okay, this is ln. Uh, we don't know. We haven't even talked about what ln really means. But, okay, so the, I've given you the formula up here at the top. Some of the symbols didn't print out, so I will write them in. But it turns out that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. We'll talk about that soon enough. For right now, it's just a, a rule that we're going to use. So what's the derivative of y with respect to z? So that's the derivative of this function. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x, so the derivative of ln of z is 1 over z. Easy enough. 1 over z times chain rule. The z dx, the derivative of the z equation is 3x squared. What am I missing? Yeah. So in this case, it's already all multiplication, and you don't need them. But again, it's better safe than sorry. And then finally, what letter should get replaced? Z. We don't want Z in the answer. So instead of 1 over Z, we put 1 over X cubed. And that's multiplied by 3X squared. And again, just to save time in class today, we haven't bothered simplifying anything with this one. I can't, I can't leave it in good conscience. So what does this simplify to? 3 over x. OK, that's it. Questions on that one? OK, so in your groups, you have about 19 minutes. Um, there are five derivative, five chain rule derivative things to do. If you work quickly, you might be able to get all of them done and still have some time to maybe fill in a few that we skipped. 
the one recommendation I'm going to make is that you do this one as number four. It might be the hardest one, so maybe start with something gentler in number two, and then come back to this one. And help, help each other out, check in with each other. It's okay if some people are doing the Z version and some people the F and G version, but let's see if we get the same exact answers at the end.